Hi, it's Brad from Bayesfield again, and this is video series three called Finishing Touches, Refine Your Data Through Bayesfield's Availability Management Tools. Uh, this is my favorite part of Bayesfield. I don't know why I love availability and availability management so much. Um, so I'm sorry if I'm kind of excited right now, uh, but I really want to get into it, so let's go. Okay, before we get into some demonstrations uh, in part one here, we have to go over some of the background and configuration uh, of availability and really what, what is availability and why is it important. Um, so love talking about this topic. If we talk about uh, the, going back to the Bayes house, which you saw in our video series one, we've really now, uh, we're looking to move up from that real-time monitoring uh, sense to more of a aggregation and reporting sense. So uh, more for asset managers to know what their availability is, how much lost energy they've had over a certain period of time, how much production they've had over a certain period of time. And really, you can think of availability management, the process of availability management, as a staircase uh, to heaven, so to speak. It gets you where you need to be. It's incredibly important, and it's crucial to organizations that are trying to operate their plants efficiently, trying to track down contracts, uh, track down kilowatt hours, basically. Just a reminder, the basement and the first floor, we kind of went over those in video series one and two, respectively. So now we're on the, the, the penthouse suite, so to speak. Just some definitions first. We're going to say these words a lot, uh, so I think it's important to, to let you know what I, what I mean. So we're going to use the word availability allocation a lot. And an allocation um, is, is an event, and it's really just a period of time from T0 to T1 in which a given asset is in the same state of performance as described by an allocation category. Okay, so uh, the category describes kind of metadata or the type of outage it is, more or less, or it doesn't have to be an outage, it could be anything. Availability management is then the process by which users edit and manually override these categories to get the ultimate level of accuracy uh, in their reporting. So I like to, to tell customers and to users Think of the Bayesfield availability management process as your own personal finance process, right? If you use a tool like mint.com or some other personal finance tool to automatically download credit card transactions, the next step you do is make sure that they're categorized correctly so you know how much you've spent on uh, shopping versus groceries versus whatever. I found out that my wife spent $15,000 of our money on amazon.com last year because of that. You know, it's the same concept in Basefield. You want to know how much money, how much megawatt hours you're losing because of things that are reoccurring, because of events, because of faults. Um, so we have uh, kind of an akin, the, the, the transaction or the source uh, would be akin to the alarm in our case that caused the event. And the categories would be akin to the, you know, the, uh, the personal finance categories. And the transaction amount would be akin to our lost kilowatt hours. Uh, so it's, it's the same exact concept. You're just doing it for your power plant. Let's go over the categories. The, the categories are the, the primary metadata that you want to influence when we're talking about allocations. And users in Basefield can actually add their own category sets, just like, let's say, Mint.com. You can add your own budget categories. You can add your own you know, reliability categories. A few things we have out of the box with NERC GADs, if you're familiar, for PV and, and wind, have a predefined set of classification categories that they require you to uh, report on at the end of the month. We have those built into the system by default. Um, but the cool part is users can define what we call their own allocation types and then link in different categories to those types. And we'll go over that in the solution demonstration. So a few real world cases on the flexibility and why that's needed. If you're a manager or an operator of five different sites, you might have contracts with three different operators or OEMs with three different contractual terms of availability guarantees that they're providing. Therefore, you can model those with three different allocation types. Uh, so you would need a flexible allocation system in order to meet that use case. Um, the other use case, as I mentioned, is trying to report up to industry standards like IEC or NERC GADs. Allocation systems help uh, recreate that. Um, you can also use internal systems that, let's say you wanted to sort out your losses and your availability by subsystem. Uh, you can add your own custom uh, description of all the sub subsystems of an asset and then sort out losses by the subsystem from a reliability-based standpoint. Um, so there's a million different examples you could use these category sets as, but just a few common ones that our, our users seem to uh, find handy. 
You can also uh, physically link these independent systems together. So the advantage here is uh, you can manage just one single source of events and then uh, reallocate and reclassify and manage the categories all in one user interface. So this is uh, what we call linked allocations. Um, so, you know, we've gone over this. This is all great. Why do we care? Okay. Well, we care because allocations and allocation categories are the basis for any availability calculation. And the availability calculation is pretty much intrinsic to any contract that you sign, either as an operator that you're providing a service to for uh, an owner, or uh, if you're an owner and then you have operators that have given you contractual guarantees on availability. And it's very specific how those availability numbers uh, need to be uh, calculated. Generically, we've put in a, a system that measures both time and production-based availability uh, based on the category sets. Um, so the definition of time-based availability is given by this equation, and we're basically just summing up the time spent uh, in unavailable categories and dividing it by the total time minus excluded time and multiplying that by 100. And production is basically equivalent to that, but instead of looking at the percentage of time assets are uh, operating when they should be, we're looking at the percentage of energy the assets have generated when they should be generated. So these are the two kind of common most industry metrics um, that uh, calculate availability. So how do we know what, what things, when the asset's unavailable? How do we know when it's excluded? Uh, that's where the categories come into play. Uh, and we'll show you this in the solution demonstration, but for every category you create, you're able to give it a uh, predefined option of how that category contributes to the availability uh, calculation. So every, this leads to the ability for every allocation system to have its own independent availability calculation. So if you have four different contractual availability um, uh, uh, measures you need to produce, we just need to measure, model four different allocation systems and then configure the categories uh, to be um, accurate to produce the correct numbers. The next step basically is once you have these allocation systems created, right, you need to be able to map the event codes to these categories. And we showed you this a little bit in series one, uh, video four, but usually OEMs and, and contracts are made such that people tell you when, you know, event code 20 is active that it counts against your availability or event code 22 is active, it doesn't count against your availability. So all these allocation categories are linked back to the domain models and the event templates uh, through just an Excel template you can create. And again, we'll show you and we'll refresh you uh, on that concept uh, here today. So with that being said, let's get into the solution demonstration where we go over all this uh, configuration and show you uh, how to set up your own availability system in Basefield. Okay, we're in the portal now and we're going to show exactly where the allocation systems are located and how you can edit or create your own uh, types and your own categories. Uh, from the uh, main menu, you can go to Administration, Configuration, and we're going to go to Allocation Types first. And remember, an allocation type is just a system of categories which represent performance conditions of your assets. Um, Basefield will load up several standard uh, allocation systems, namely uh, for GADS Wind and Solar, it will load up uh, the required and optional uh, classification sets uh, for you already. Uh, we'll also upload any type of standard win contractual allocation system. Uh, so, for example, we have already the, let's say, the GE turbine uh, set of categories that GE uses for internal reporting already loaded into the platform for you. Um, so, we try to do some of the work up front, but users will also always like to come in here and either edit these categories or just simply create their new, uh, create a new allocation system. Uh, just to show you before I uh, do any of that, let's go ahead and look at the, the WinGADS performance set as an example. Uh, in, in the next videos, we'll look at rules and triggers, but for now, we're just going to look at the categories, which are the, really the most important part. So if I look at WinGADS, uh, that requires me to set up about 20 different performance categories, all with a very specific name and a very specific performance kind of rule. So you can see I've loaded all these in here already. If for some reason, though, you wanted to create a, a subset and a new GADS category, uh, you can give a new category here. So we'll just call it, uh, we'll call it Brad's category, you know, or it could be whatever. And I'm going to give it a nice hot, hot pink or hot purple color. 
So this means whenever the allocation occurs, you'll get a, a nice period that's a nice purple color. I'm about to have a baby girl, so let's, uh, let's get in the mood here. Um, and then really the, the important part about defining uh, this category is you want to define, you know, what, what, is, what type of outages or performance states are associated uh, with this category. Um, and let's say my category is, I want to use it to denote whenever the machine is kind of down and unavailable. So I want it to count against my availability number and the machine is physically not generating. So what I could do is go to this predefined option and I could say um, unavailable, non-generating as my template. And that will take care of all these other options for me. Um, or, you know, if let's say Brad's category was, let's say if this denoted, it, uh, I wanted this to represent times when the machine was running at, at full performance, I would say available, generating full performance. Um, maybe this, I wanted to create some normal kind of D-rate category, right? Uh, I could choose that the, the basic description of that is the machine is available, generating partial performance. So the big thing about this is the first part, the available versus unavailable, tells me whether or not the time and the energy spent in this category will count against uh, or for my availability. The generating, non-generating just tells me the generic performance state, whether the machine is operating or not operating. The full versus partial performance tells me if the machine is generating at its full capacity with no active warnings versus partial performances that this category should be meant to uh, a partial performance or you know a derated or curtailed state. Um, so that's the general description in these predefined options. That's the most important part. And when you're done, you just click add. Um, don't need to fiddle with anything else. And you can see I've created this uh, default derate category. I'm just going to uh, disable that for now because I don't want it to mess up my GADS reporting. But that just shows you how you can create uh, or append a new category on, on top of an existing base field allocation system and what that category will do to your availability tool. Um, the other part is, is kind of the next step is once you create your categories or once you're happy with your category sets and your, your individual categories is to make sure your asset models are consistent with your allocation systems. So if I go back to allocation type, you know, right now I have installed several different category sets. And I, what I wanna do now is make sure my asset models have event coding that is consistent with this. So if I go to my asset models, and let's take the same GADS example. Uh, I'm gonna go back to my, uh, my GE uh, machine, and I'm gonna go to the alarm templates. Uh, alarm templates. I'm gonna export my alarm template. This will give me a nice Excel file of, uh, of this uh, asset model, rather. And I'm gonna go uh, into my alarm template. And this now gives me a complete list of every single event in my GE machine. If you remember, we went over this in video series one. Um, the most important part though for availability management is we went over some of these remarks and the, the type of alarm in video series one. I'm just gonna hide these. The most important part for availability management is the mapping of these events to then um, the different category sets that you wanna use. So for example, for this GE machine, and let me unhide the, the name here. There we go. Uh, description. And we do this out of the box for you, but this helps you how, you know, if you want to take this to the next step and either add your own categories or, or change the categories that Basefield installs, all you have to do is find the event you want to, to change. And you can go to the category sets. So if you wanted to change the, GAD, the default GADS classification for this event, you could just type in the, the new event or the new category name. And you can do this for across the board for any type of uh, allocation system. So we're saying for this GE model, when events occur, they're gonna be categorized in a GADS notation, performance system and subsystem, and also the GE contractual category. Um, so you can continue to append on uh, your allocation systems as well. So say for example, um, I, I went back to my Basefield portal and I created my own allocation type and I called it, you know, Brad, or I called it uh, type two. I could add a type two and I could give, then the categories that I made in type two, I could go through and code all my alarms to be of that same notation. Um, so this is something ideally you only have to do once. Again, we do standard classification for you 
out of the box, so we don't want you to spend a lot of time up front. But if you wanna make tweaks to your system, this is essentially how you go from event code to allocation category, all the way up to availability, and this is how you configure it. Thank you.